Yeah, so Manish and I, we're just, we're just kind of crazy about seeing uh, unity in the body of Christ. Um, because quite honestly, there are no denominations in heaven. It's a good place to say amen. I'm going to make you say amen a lot tonight, so get used to it. You're just getting warmed up, okay? Um, there's no, there are no denominations in heaven. And um, coming from a Hindu background, I think some of you already know, I, I came to the Lord from a Hindu Brahmin back, background. And coming from a Hindu background, um, I wish the church was more famous for love. I wish the church, I wish the church was, was more famous for unity. But looking from outside in, guess what the world from outside in is looking at and what are they seeing? They're probably seeing a whole bunch of denominations and wondering, okay, and usually that's the first question, if you've ever tried reaching out to any unbeliever or somebody, that's the first question they tend to ask you, right? Why are there all these denominations? And then it gets very tricky to answer that and, um, and obviously they're going to do their homework online, right? Google is there, <laughs> you know, they're going to do their homework and they're like, whoa, if these guys can't get along and they talk about the love of Jesus and all of that, it looks like these guys need help. <laughs> I don't think they can help me much. I'm, I'm quite happy where I am. And, and something that gets me is that, at least when I was, when I was a Hindu, um, you know, there was never an issue going to one temple and then going to the other temple you know, that was never an issue. If you go to one temple, you go to another, no one's getting upset. The priest is not getting upset, if you know what I mean. But, but obviously coming, to, coming from that kind of background to a church setting, it was like, whoa, you know, uh, no go, <laughs> kind, of, kind of a thing. Um, and, and so, yeah, I think, I, think, I think it's time. I think God is doing something incredible uh, on the face of the earth and... Uh, it's quite interesting because every time I, I'm, I'm, I'm just a news buff, so I, I do a lot of reading and I would like to believe that I stay abreast with a lot of current affairs and stuff like that. I've always been like that. And um, it's amazing because when you see all the places where there's persecution and you see the interviews of, of those pastors who have been, you know where there's persecution, an interview with believers and stuff. The one thing they would say is you're so grateful for persecution. And... Uh, when they are asked, why do you say that? The first response would be, well, it's good because the first people to run out the door are the hypocrites. <laughs> They're the first ones to leave when, you know, when things get hot. And the second thing is, it forces everyone to get united. So sometimes, I, I, there was a time I used to wonder, God, why, are, why is all this persecution? You know, why, why, why? And... Uh, I guess I got that answer in that, in that interview with that, with that, with that I saw with that pastor. It's pretty incredible that it gets rid of uh, the, you know, the guys who are just chair warmers, first of all. And, and secondly, it, um, it, it compels people to come together. So how many of you know about the Arab Spring in, in Egypt that happened? Anybody? Yeah? Arab Spring, the whole revolution that happened in, in Egypt and... Uh, the long-time president was, you know, uh, overthrown and all of that just by a popular revolution of the people. I had the privilege of hearing um, uh, one of the pastors of one of the largest churches in Egypt. Um, and uh, they've got like, I think, 10,000, 20,000 members, something like that. I may be getting the number wrong. It's actually probably more than that. And he was sharing um, in Dubai, he was visiting and he was, he was sharing and he was saying that the best thing about the revolution was that it forced all the churches to come together. Now Egypt has got some pretty strong denominations, orthodox, pre-orthodox, and so you can imagine you had all these orthodox <laughs> leaders on the floor together with you know, um, leaders from you know, other, other more charismatic, um, you know, uh, um, persuasions and it was just amazing when he was sharing that and because of the revolution they had almost 5,000 or, or 10,000 new between 5,000 10,000 newcomers in the course of a month in their church somebody say wow <laughs> imagine 5,000 10,000 newcomers coming here <laughs> All right. hey it's possible amen? amen so God God works in strange ways and um, um, even in chaos even in absolute chaos, he's doing something and he works all things for good.